but it isn't primarily an aerobatic airplane. And throughout this entire performance, Greg is going to put this thing through its maximum capability as he comes in high above us and goes skyward into that severe clear over Abbotsford. Now look at the vertical ability of the T-33 as he gets in a full roll on that vertical line, now hanging upside down. He'll start to head back down towards the ground to give us an idea of the incredible speed capabilities of the T-33. The aircraft is powered by an Allison J-33 Rolls-Royce 10 engine that generates 5,400 pounds of thrust at a top speed of 505 knots. Has a range of just over 1,300 nautical miles and a service seating ceiling of 45,000 feet. Here is a great big Barnstormers loop. Greg Collier in the T-33. He'll roll the airplane upright. Now if the wind didn't blow the smoke away, of course you'd see a great big Cubanade in the sky. It's a figure eight lying on its side in the skies over the Abbotsford Airport. It's incredible high-speed pass from the right. Greg Collier in the T-33. Look at how close he likes to fly this airplane to the ground. On June 23, 1943, General Hap Arnold approved the letter contract for Lockheed to build the XP-80. First XP-80, nicknamed Lullabelle, was built in the security of a temporary structure thrown together in 10 days from old engine packing crates. An entire machine shop was purchased so that the tools needed to build Lullabelle would not be taken away from the Lockheed assembly line currently in wartime production. Slow rolling the aircraft. Down the entire length of the show line. The speed of that original aircraft was 502 miles per hour. Now, take a look to the right as Greg brings the T-33 right down on the deck, pulls back on the stick, and rolls the aircraft as he goes. He is using maximum deflection on the stick right now to perform those rolls. Again, this airplane is not designed primarily for aerobatics, so it takes a little bit of coaxing to get that aircraft to roll like you just saw Greg do with it just now. 50 caliber fire into him until the MiG exploded. It was the first of 827 minutes to be shot down in Korea and the first jet versus jet victory ever. That was the inverted pass in the turret T-33. Now watch closely as Greg turns away from us for just three. You can see the wingtip uh, tanks there. The landing gear is down. He's got this aircraft slowed right down, right above the stall speed. A great photo opportunity of Greg Collier in the T-33. on that Rolls-Royce engine. And now he's going to perform for us what he calls a maximum performance Max G horizontal eight turn. During this entire maneuver, folks, he is going to be accelerating, experiencing six times the force of gravity through the entire maneuver. There's the first turn. He's got the power up and you can notice as the smoke trail gets thinner behind the aircraft, you can tell that he's speeding up as he approaches center stage and then banks to the left and begins the same horizontal eight. Now, how did the aircraft become the T-33? Well, Lockheed pushed the Army Air Corps for a jet trainer version, but the Air Corps saw no need for such an aircraft, and they didn't want to waste any fighter airplanes. The methods for training jet pilots in 1947 was 180 hours in the T-6, 50 hours in P-51 Mustangs, and about 25 hours in a captive P-80. Finally, in June of January of 1943, there he is rolling over into knife edge one, that's two to inverted. 
three to knife edge again, and four, a wonderfully executed four-point hesitation roll, stopping the aircraft every 90 degrees through our...